Good morning. It's about nine o'clock. I caught a piece of the plenary session this morning, but I didn't record anything because I was also making uh, scrambled eggs for my kids. I'm really excited that in a couple hours, we're gonna try to host a virtual coffee break. We're gonna try to get people to come to the gather town and just visit and maybe talk to some people. So I'm really excited about that. I've stayed up pretty late the last couple of nights editing these videos, so I'm a little tired. So I think today's gonna be kind of my rest day because tomorrow is my press conference day that I'm really excited about. So. Oh man, my audio capture didn't work. I got my screen recorder working, but I didn't get the audio capture working. So Joanna Voss was giving a really wonderful talk about the rotation in brown dwarfs. I just absolutely love this animation of this brown dwarf showing this really dramatic variability from hot spots in bands. And the question that we ask about these objects is, you know, how do they form? Uh, so for giant planets, right, uh, we generally believe that they form via some uh, version of the core accretion pathway. For stars, they form, you know, broadly speaking, via the collapse of a cold molecular cloud of gas, and then you have uh, different flavors of that, like in disk fragmentation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the question of, you know, how does this object form is not very clear for brown dwarves. Citizen scientists from over 167 countries in all 50 states participate. It's hard even to figure out how many there are in total because the barrier for participation is so low, people aren't even required to sign in. But uh, something like 150,000 folks have participated at some level. In the For many years now, I've been working on kind of a computational project to download every single WISE exposure ever taken, which is about 35 million, making up uh, something like a quarter petabyte of raw data and then make co-added maps spanning this full time baseline here, which is now almost 10 years of public data. Okay, good morning. It's about 10.15 here. There's been some really great sessions this morning. I really enjoyed the first Brown Dwarf session. So as I've had a little bit of a break today, I, we've been thinking about some of the stuff that I've been missing. Yeah, I, we all, as we all do, I miss a lot of things. But one thing that I miss, exhibitor hall, the poster hall, I miss all the booths. So critical to my double S experience is the wander around the exhibitor booth. It's the letting the ideas come to me and finding people that I would never meet otherwise. To a small degree, one of the things that I'm missing is swag. I thought it could be just a little bit interesting to try a new segment that we'll call Swag Review. This is not a terribly well thought out segment. So any swag that I can find in my house today, that is swag that wi that wins the Swag Review. And right off the bat, my NASA mouse pad. This is a really decent mouse pad. Jim, you have a you have an optical mouse, you don't need a mouse pad. Yes, that's true, you don't need a mouse pad. It's not the 1990s with rollerball mice, but I did have a wrist injury in high school and the mouse pad is just a little bit of ergonomic support and it just looks cool, it looks nice. Let's see what else I can find. Okay, now there's been tons of stickers. I have used every sticker that I collected at the last like several meetings. My whole like sticker cache that I had with two little kids stuck in this house, we have used every sticker. All right, a couple years ago, Aura started having these little neoprene cases. And I have probably taken four of these over the last couple of years because they are great. I keep one in my box of camera gear that sits below my desk. Aura, please, when I see you in a year, have some more of these. And I think last year you had some red ones. Those were really pretty. Okay, in terms of consumables, along with stickers, um, I got a, I always grab sticky notepads. I'll definitely be stocking up on sticky notes and notepads because those are like, su they're super useful for me and they're great art supplies for my kids. Okay, what else? Last year, Apache Point Observatory had some chapstick. It still smells good. It's probably fine. Does it have an expiration date? It's probably fine. Oh, this is a great one. Shout out to Princeton University Press for having coasters. I don't remember if this was at AAS or at AAAS, but I grabbed a couple of these little cork coasters. I think these are great. They're really simple. They're like nice small cork coasters, which is good. Use a coaster. Don't be a monster. Use a coaster. I had not even remembered these were swag. That's, that is how you know that's good swag. A plus for the coasters. Yes, I keep my pens in a Campbell soup can. What do you keep yours in? I used to collect every single pen at AAS because I thought it was like a really useful thing to have. And then during grad school, I did a lot of writing and I got really picky about pens. The Zoom Zebra F301. Almost without fail, it is the only pen I use. All those pens that I gathered at AAS, all those mission pens, there, no, there's none here. There's not a single pen here from a mission or a vendor. You might love the conference pens. My thesis advisor used to say she never bought pens, she just stocked up during AAS. Not me. 
I give pens, pens get zero, I guess. That's the brutal truth of swag review. Okay, a couple more things for the swag review. Little tote bags. My kids play with them, they live in my car. We've got them floating around the house. I've probably got three or four. These are good, I got a few of these. A plus on the tote bags. They've held up. So this is from a couple years ago, not from AAS, but it's an exoplanet coloring book. It's hardly drawn in at all, actually. I think because it actually got shoved to the bottom of the drawer. And the last item that I was able to find that gets a total recommendation from me for swag, these cheap sunglasses. Astrobites, amazing bright orange sunglasses. They're like really basic sunglasses that live in my car. This pair has held up like shockingly well. A++ for the conference sunglasses. That's everything I could find. Like it's surprisingly little, considering how much I bring back every year. Some of it's like candy and it actually gets consumed. But the stickers get stuck on things. The notebooks get written in. The pens get used, or in my case, thrown away. What's interesting to think about is the legacy of all this stuff. The material stuff that kind of makes up that conference experience. It becomes the texture and the decoration of your life. As Emily Rice said about Startorialist, even if you don't think a lot about what you wear, your stuff tells a story about who you are. You probably go through my car and maybe my house and my junk drawer and figure out that I'm an astronomer just based on the random stuff that I have laying around. So I miss you, swag. I love you, swag. And my plea to you, exhibitors and vendors and companies and organizations who come and support the AAS, the swag appetite will be strong. So next year, bring the good stuff. Do you have a swag item that you can't live without? Tell me below in the comments. Fifteen minutes, so I gotta go make another cup of coffee for the coffee break. Hey. How are you? Oh, I saw Lauren briefly. Hey, Lauren. All right, some people are showing up. Ooh. Tap Z, you dance. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Z to dance. Z to dance. Oh, look at everybody dancing. <laughs> this is great. Oh my god, apparently there's a conga line on the South Beach. I gotta go. Oh my god, there's people. <laughs> this is absurd, you people. I love this. That Gather Town coffee time was super fun and ridiculous. And there was a conga line and it was just kind of random fun for a half hour. Somebody said on Twitter that it was the first time they had run into somebody they knew in like a year. I think we did good there. Uh, public policy session after that. So there's at least three different sessions that I think have talks going on right now that I want to go see. That's just like a normal double AS. Unlike the real meetings, I am now in two sessions at once. This is a terrible idea. Don't do this. Don't do two sessions at once. This is awful. One of the themes that I'm hearing over and over as I visit the booths yesterday and today is that they're lonely. There's 3,000 people registered for this meeting, and the exhibitors are just kind of sitting in the Zoom rooms waiting to talk. It makes me really glad that we did the uh, impromptu coffee break, and uh, maybe we can find a few more opportunities like that to be social. One of the other things that I'm seeing at the exhibitor booths is they have uh, they have quizzes that you can fill out, and if you're chosen from the quiz, then they uh, a bunch of the booths are going to send real swag. So I don't know if they're going to be sunglasses, but I've been trying to tell them that the sunglasses are a good item that I like. That's kind of fun. Have some swag sent. I don't know. Maybe I'll win. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who came to the coffee time. Thank you to all the vendors and the booths that I visited for being fun and funny and pleasant to talk to. Have fun. Talk to each other. I'll be on Gather all week if you want to talk to me there. See you tomorrow.